This is Ken Behrens with Tropical Birding, and today I will take you on a virtual birding tour of Madagascar. Madagascar is a big island off the southeast coast of Africa. You can see this is Madagascar. It's this long island. Uh, this here is Mozambique, South Africa, Tanzania, Indian Ocean, Arabian Peninsula. Up at the top right, that's the Indian subcontinent. Now, if you just looked at this map, and didn't know much about biogeography, you would probably imagine that Madagascar is going to be sort of africa light. It's going to have a few endemics and be a little bit different from the mainland, but be pretty similar to Africa. But that is completely wrong. Madagascar is just a whole different world. Biologically, geologically, culturally, it's really its own world. Um, part of that is due to the way the continents separated. Madagascar was actually separated from Africa a long time ago and it was more recently attached to India and maybe even Antarctica than it was to the African mainland. So it's been evolving in isolation for a very long time. Madagascar is a special place for me personally because it's where I live uh, for the last eight years. This is a view from my back porch. This is a big mountain called the Montagne de Francais. It's covered in dry forest, there's big baobabs up there. My wife is Malagasy. This is a picture from our wedding. We're holding these dwarf chameleons, a uh, localized endemic on the north of Madagascar. And along with Keith Barnes, also of Tropical Birding, I co-authored this photographic guide to the wildlife of Madagascar. So there's a lot of reasons for a naturalist to visit Madagascar. For a birder, one of the big reasons is the endemic families. Uh, there are five or six, depending on your taxonomy. One of them is the acides. Uh, there are two sunbird-like acides, and there are two broadbill-like acides. Another endemic family is the mesites. These guys are a bit of a taxonomic enigma. Nobody's sure what they are or where they came from. They sort of look and act like rails. They seem to be somewhat related to cranes. Just one of many weird and wonderful things in Madagascar. Another endemic family is the Malagasy green bulls, fairly recently described and recognized. One of my favorites is Madagascar cuckoo roller. This bird is so distinct and weird that it's actually in its own order of birds. Uh, there's only about 23 orders of birds in the world and this is one of them. And if you just look at the position of the eye, Typical bird eye would be down here. Cuckoo roller has an eye that's almost up on top of its head. It's just a very weird dinosaur bird. The Vangas are a big family in Madagascar. These are like Madagascar's answer to the Darwin's finches of the Galapagos. Uh, they're actually way more diverse, way more colorful. They just don't get as much press as the Darwin's finches. My favorite of the endemic families is the ground rollers. There are five ground rollers. Four of them are in the rainforest. One is in the southwest. This is my favorite of the bunch. One of my favorite birds in the world, the scaly ground roller. Every time I look at this bird, I just see some little detail I never noticed before. It's just such a stunning, complex bird. Madagascar is also the home of lemurs. Uh, this is a whole radiation of primates that's only found in Madagascar. Just to give you a little idea what makes lemurs cool, they're often pretty accommodating and they're incredible leapers. I put this in slow-mo so you could just see the power and the length of this leap. And this is not even one of the more powerful lemurs. This is a brown lemur. The Sifakas are actually much more impressive uh, leapers. Madagascar is home to a little over half of the world's chameleons. There's almost a whole continent's worth of frog diversity. And this is one of my favorites. It's called the Starry Night Reed Frog. And there's just all kinds of other cool, funky creatures. <clears throat> this is a giraffe-necked weevil a very weird sort of beetle. And one of the great things about Madagascar is that almost all of the wildlife is tame, approachable, photographable. 
know, some forested places around the world. It's, there's tons of cool stuff, but you just don't see most of it most of the time. Madagascar is just full of wildlife. You just constantly are running into a cool butterfly or a chameleon or a frog or a bird or a lemur. It's just a joy to visit Madagascar as a naturalist. There's not just wildlife, there's also amazing plants. Um, and just as a small example, most people don't realize that two-thirds of the world's baobabs are endemic to Madagascar. So I'll take you on a virtual tour now. Um, this is the birding tour that Tropical Birding does. We offer two extensions, one up to the northwest and one to the northeast. And then uh, I'll focus on the main tour, which is a big loop in the south. We fly out of the capital and then we drive back up. But every trip starts in the capital of Antananarivu. Antananarivu has been described as a city floating on a sea of rice. Which is quite a good description. It's quite a unique city. It has a bit of a medieval feeling to it. You can still see ox carts going down the main road sometimes. Really not like any other city in the world. That's the Malagasy flag there in the top left. So when we fly out of Tana, headed for the southwest, we'll see a lot of rice paddies. That's the staple food of Madagascar is rice. You might see some rural scenes like this, uh, small villages, rice paddies, churches. And then after a morning of travel, we arrive down in the southwest in the spiny forest. This is one of Madagascar's three major biomes and habitats, and it's by far the most visually distinctive of them. It's unlike any other place in the world. It always feels like being on another planet to me, or like being on some sort of Star Trek set. It's just incredibly alien and weird. You've got lots of baobab trees. This is an octopus tree. Uh, it's a little bit like a cactus, but uh, quite different. This is a pachypodium, another fat-trunked tree, a bit like a baobab. So when we start birding in the spiny forest, we start to look for some of the common endemics of Madagascar. One of those is the Madagascar kukal, which has one of my favorite vocalizations of Malagasy birds. <laughs> The Malagasy name for this bird is Tuluhu. Um, like most Malagasy bird names, it's named for its call. Tuluhu. <clears throat> One of the big targets down in the southwest is the long-tailed ground roller. Uh, it's sort of like a roadrunner, big long-legged ground-dwelling bird. Quite a beauty. We'll also start to see kuas. Uh, kuas are members of the cuckoo family but they're a lot bigger than typical cuckoos. They have bright bare skin around the eyes, just lots of character. These tend to be uh, favorite birds on the tour. This is the running kua. Might see a few mammals as well. Uh, this is a lesser hedgehog tenric. Looks a bit like a hedgehog, but it's actually in a completely different family, the tenrix, which is near endemic to Madagascar. There's a few water birds too. This is a Madagascar plover. It's a pretty rare one. It's a beautiful shorebird. It's a little bit like a dotterel. <laughs> when we drive around in the spiny forest, we tend to get a bit dusty, which gives the local kids a chance to uh, practice writing English. So after the spiny forest, our next mission is to visit the island of Nusi Ve. Um, this is Tuliar. We start in the big town of Tuliar when we took, take a boat down through this big reef system. And then we arrive at this island of Nusi Ve. Um, Nusi Ve in Malagasy means island, yes or no. It's such a tiny little island that it's almost in doubt as to whether it's really an island. When we get on the boat, we take ox carts out into the harbor, which is a, an unforgettable experience. 
This video will give you a little bit of a feel for what it's like. There's the boat, almost made it. <clears throat> so after about an hour in the boat, we arrive at the little island. It seems like a tropical paradise. You have turquoise seas and white sand and birders start to feel a little bit guilty about, are we actually allowed to be in such a nice place on a birding tour? But not to worry, we do have some target birds. And one of them is a crab plover. It's a big, cool looking shorebird and it makes up its own family. So that's a big target for family listers. Anusive has a little colony of red-tailed tropic birds. This is the scarcest of the world's three species of tropic birds. Quite a beautiful bird in flight, this weird red pintail. Have a chance to do a bit of shopping. I know that's a word that strikes fear into some people's hearts, usually including mine, <laughs> but I have to say I actually quite enjoy the shopping in Madagascar. There's uh, very cool stuff that's actually locally made with Malagasy designs. Uh, it's not very expensive. Uh, shopping is actually quite a fun part of this trip. So from the southwestern coast, we head inland. Um, we head for the Zombice Voi Basia National Park, which is a different habitat. It's western dry deciduous forest, quite a bit taller and lusher than the spiny forest. One of the claims to fame of this national park is that it has a near endemic bird, not just to Madagascar, but to this national park. It's called the Aperts tetraca. It also has an endemic lemur, the Zombice sportive lemur. These guys are theoretically nocturnal, but they seem to spend most of the day sitting and staring out at the sun like this. It's good for us. This is our best chance on the tour to see Varro's Sifaka. This is one of these big, beautiful diurnal lemurs. Incredibly powerful leapers. Little video, this one's having a good scratch. <laughs> We spend the night near Isalu. Isalu is a big sandstone massif with beautiful scenery and it reminds a lot of people of the American Southwest. And we stay here at one of my favorite lodges in the world. An absolutely gorgeous, luxurious place with incredible scenery. <clears throat> and this lodge, like pretty much everywhere on the tour, has fantastic food. Uh, Malagasy food is really nice, um, and for a while Madagascar was a French colony, so you have French food, and then you have Malagasy French cuisine that's sort of fused, and basically the food is just good throughout the tour. A lot of people have told me that it has the best food of any birding tour they've ever done. Here's some banan flambe being prepared for us. We're on the hot rum. Good stuff. After a delicious dinner, we head out to do a bit of owling. Madagascar has a bunch of endemic owls, and one of them is the white-browed owl. So from Isalo, we continue inland. It's quite a beautiful drive with these big Inselberg mountains along the way. And at the base of one of these mountains is a little patch of forest that a local community has protected. And this forest is just full of ring-tailed lemurs. This lemur is sort of the face of Madagascar's biodiversity. It's in zoos and other collections all around the world. But it's really cool to see them in their natural habitat. Beautiful lemurs. So we carry on and we head east to reach the eastern rainforest. 
If you look at the Google map here, you'll see we're crossing the dry center of Madagascar and then we drop down the east slope. You see this band of green? That's the eastern rainforest zone. That's where all the rain falls when it comes off the Indian Ocean. And that is where the vast majority of Madagascar's wildlife is found. It's lush and green, which is a whole different world from the spiny forest. So one of many cool birds that we'll be looking for at Ranamafana is the rufous-headed ground roller. It's a bit of a bamboo specialist. And we'll also be looking for the white-throated rail. It's a little bit shy, but it's uh, relatively extroverted for a rail. Another big target is brown mesite. That's a member of one of those endemic families. Rana Mafana National Park was actually established in the 1990s, relatively recently, when this animal was discovered there. This is a golden bamboo lemur. It just amazed people that this big, beautiful, distinctive lemur escaped discovery until the 1990s. There's lots of other lemurs too. This is a Milne Edwards Sifaka. Beautiful big black and white lemur. <laughs> Ranamathana has some of the best night walks anywhere. Um, we often see seven species of chameleons on a single night walk. This is O'Shaughnessy's chameleon, cryptic chameleon, uh, brown leaf chameleon, just three of several species that we often see. Oh, from Ranamafana we head north and we cross the high plateau of Madagascar. This is sort of the cultural heartland of the country and it's a pretty densely populated area. It, going through here is always a bit like traveling back in time. You have terraced rice paddies, three-story red brick thatched houses, ox carts. It's just fascinating. It doesn't get a lot of press, but even people who come mainly for the wildlife tend to really enjoy this cultural side of uh, Madagascar tour. Uh, people are super friendly, kids are waving and smiling. Uh, it's just delightful. We stop in a couple towns along the way and we visit some artisanal workshops. Uh, this is a woodworking shop. Uh, there's a tradition in this town that goes back hundreds of years of making things out of wood. So this gentleman's working on wood overlays. Beautiful, incredibly time-consuming process. And this is a handmade saw made out of recycled things. For example, that's a spring from a mattress. At another workshop, they turn old cow horns into dominoes and spoons and all kinds of cool stuff. Again, lots of ingenuity and lots of direct recycling. This is actually an old uh, washing machine motor. So we skirt the capital of Tana and then we go down the east slope again to get back into the rainforest. We go to Andasi Bay, Montadilla National Park. This is where we're hoping to clean up on the last couple ground rollers. And this is actually the most common one, the Pitta-like ground roller. Beautiful blue outer tail. This is the short-legged ground roller. Uh, it's pretty easy to see how it got that name. Unlike the other ones, this is mainly a tree-dwelling bird. It's kind of like a giant puff bird. It doesn't do a whole lot of ground rolling. Andasi Bay is a good place to see one of the world's best camouflaged animals. I wonder if you can actually see it. Uh, the frame is basically full with this animal, but people really struggle to see these. This might make it a bit easier. So this is a leaf-tailed gecko. They have these mossy fringes all along the edges of the body and the hands. 
not only that, they're actually able to change their color to match the substrate. So this one's on this little stripy tree for a uh, day roost, and it's developed these big brown stripes. It just blends in incredibly well. Here's a little uh, movie of a leaf-tailed gecko. Give you a feel for just how weird and funky they are. One of the big draw cards at Andasi Bay is Indri. This is the largest lemur. It's kind of like a big black and white teddy bear with these cool, funky ear tufts. Maybe the coolest thing about Indri is that they make one of the world's great natural sounds. And rather than describe it, I'll just let you hear it. Hearing these guys is unforgettable and can also be a bit deafening. A few more cool birds that we look for at Andasi Bay. One is a Madagascar long-eared owl. Another one is Madagascar pygmy kingfisher. This is a forest-dwelling kingfisher that mainly eats frogs. Lots of lemurs. This is a black and white ruffed lemur, one of my favorites baby. When we head back to Tana at the end of the main tour, we stop at a little uh, reptile zoo. Uh, it's a good chance to see some cool things that are hard to see in the wild. One of them is chameleons feeding. Chameleons have this incredible ability to shoot out with their tongue and catch insects, which you'll see here in slow-mo. Their tongue accelerates to 60 miles an hour in one hundredth of a second. <laughs> and the tongue is more than twice the length of the body. Let's see that again. <laughs> Always amazing to see. <laughs> that one was fast. Sometimes we also see some common tenrics chowing down on termites. Mm -mm. So that's the end of the main tour. Most people choose to do at least one or two extensions. The first extension we do is the Western Endemics extension up here in the Majunga area. So here's the town of Majunga. We do a boat trip here into the Betsy Buka Delta to look for a couple endemic birds. And then we drive down to this big tract of forest, which is called Ankarapansika National Park. It's dry western forest, a bit like in Zombice. Lots of leaf litter, lots of wetlands as well. A few great endemic birds. <clears throat> One of them is uh, Schlegel's Acidy, which has this very colorful facial skin. Madagascar Jacana. Madagascar fish eagle. Now, this is a critically endangered raptor. There's only about a hundred pairs left. When then we do a boat trip on the muddy red Betsy Buka. A big target there is the Bernier's teal. It's a very funky duck. Walks around on mud flats uh, in pairs eating. It's just a very atypical duck. It's kind of like a duck that thinks it's a shorebird. Our last extension is up to the northeast, to the Mashawala Peninsula, which is one of the biggest remaining tracts of lowland forest 
in Madagascar. A beautiful place you have. Beautiful forest, inland, and then if you go offshore you have a big reef system. It just seems like paradise. And this extension is actually called the Helmet Vanga extension. So as a guide, the pressure is on to see the Helmet Vanga. We've never missed it, although it's been pretty tough a few times, which was pretty nerve-wracking. Sometimes you're lucky enough to find a nest. Mashuala also has an endemic lemur, the red ruffed lemur. It's one of my favorite lemurs. A lot like a red panda. So that wraps up our virtual Madagascar birding tour. I uh, will hope to see some of you folks on a real non-virtual tour of Madagascar at some point. Um, just a couple details about Madagascar for anybody who's considering coming on this trip. Uh, it's a trip of moderate difficulty um, and there's really only two or three days that are moderately difficult. Most days are physically easy, so most folks are able to do this trip as quite comfortable accommodation throughout. Uh, private bathrooms, a lot of places have air conditioning, internet, food is good. Um, some people struggle with long drives. We do cover a lot of ground on this trip, but it's never boring. The scenery is always pretty interesting. 